Well, hello, 1P, uh, and welcome to Volume of Pyramids and Cones. Um, we worked on prisms and cylinders last class, and before you watch this video, you should have watched two short demonstration videos. Uh, if you haven't done that, they're linked on my website. Go and watch them. They're a nice little demonstration to show you how a prism and a pyramid um, relate to each other as far as volume is concerned or how a cone and a cylinder relate to each other. Uh, so if you haven't watched them, go and watch them. Um, so our goal today, I can find the volume of pyramids and cones by using the vol volume of a prism or a cylinder. So watch those two short demonstration videos. If you haven't, go and do it and come back. If you have, uh, welcome back. Um, these give you a vis visual comparison. So we're gonna just talk about what the relationship they found was. So here's the relationship. The volume of a prism equals the volume of a pyramid times three. We can fit three pyramids into the prism. Or stated the other direction, the volume of a pyramid equals the prism divided by three. So what we usually see, and this works for cones as well, Usually we see that the volume equals one-third the area of the base times height, or the other way we can say it is volume equals the area of the base times height, which is what we worked on yesterday with prisms and, um, and cylinders. So you find the, the volume of the prism or the cylinder that it might fit into, and then you divide it by three because it's a third of that. So now we're just going to do a couple of examples. So find the volume of the given pyramid. So the first thing we do is find the area of the base. Now the area of the base here is a rectangle. And to find the area of a rectangle, we use length times width. And this particular rectangle is 12 times 5. And 12 times 5 is 60. And this is in yards. And we found an area, so it's square yards. Now volume equals the area of the base times the height of the whole thing. That's what this thing going up the center is. It tells me the distance from the base at the bottom in the middle right up to the tippy top of that pyramid, uh, which is 8. So we have to take the area of the base times it by the height, but that would actually give us the volume of a prism that this thing fits inside. Since it's coming to a point, I've got to cut away some of the stuff that's on top of it, so I have to divide it by 3. So that's going to be the area of the base is 60, the height is 8, but then I have to divide it by 3. And 60 divided by 3 is 20 times 8 uh, is 160 and that's going to be in cubic yards. Now let's take a look at this cone. Um, again, cone, we're going to take the area of the base. In this case, the area of the base is a circle, so that's going to be um, pi r squared. Now, this gives me diameter. I need the radius. So the radius is going to be 11, because the radius is half the diameter. So I need pi times 11 squared. 11 squared times pi is 121 pi. And we're going to plug that into the calculator. 121 times pi is 380.1. 380.1. And that is in feet, and since it's an area, it's square feet. I move this, whoops, move this over a little bit so that I have room. And now we want to find volume, which is the area of the base times the height divided by 3. So the area of the base is 380.1 uh, times the height, which is 22. And then we have to split it into three because it's not the whole cylinder. Um, so we have 380.1. I'm just going to leave that all on there. Times 22 divided by three comes to 2787.6. 2787.6. And of course, this is in feet. And it's a volume, so it's cubed. 
This says find the volume of the given pyramid. Okay, now we need to find the area of the base first. In this case, the area of the base is a triangle. Um, so we need base times height divided by 2. And the base meets the height at a 90 degree angle. So in this bottom part here, this is what I'm looking at, this down in here. Um, base and height meet each other at 90 degrees. So this is the base and this is the height. So 8 times 6 divided by 2 is 24. And that is in inches. And since this is an area, it's inches squared. Now volume equals area of the base times the height divided by 3. Uh, the area of the base is 24, the height is 7, and then we divide it by 3. Um, 24 times 7 divided by 3, you can punch that in a calculator if you need to. Um, 24 times 7 divided by 3 is 56. You could have done that in your head a little bit easier if you do 24 divided by 3 is 8, and then 8 times 7 is 56. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. This is cubic inches. Now we got one, oh, two more examples here. A conveyor belt drops sand and it spreads out, making a giant inverted coin, corn, cone. So here we've got a conveyor belt here, and sand is trickling off of it, and it's making this giant cone on the ground. If the base of the cone measures 33 feet in diameter, so this is 33 feet in diameter, um, and it's filled to a height of 10 feet, so here's the height of 10 feet, a dump truck can hold 135 cubic feet of sand. How many trips would it take to haul away all the sand uh, the conveyor belt dropped? Okay, so we need to find the volume of sand. So let's start with that. Um, volume equals area of the base times height. So let's find the area of the base to start with. Area of the base equals, the base is a circle, so we need pi r squared. The radius is, um, well the diameter is 33, so the radius is going to be 6 16.5 and so let's plug that into the calculator 16.5 squared uh, times pi is 855.3 855.3 and that's square feet now to find the volume we need the area of the base times the height, but since it's a cone, not a cylinder, we divide it by 3. So that's 855.3 times the height is 10, and then divided by 3. So let's pull up the calculator again. I already got this on here, so I'm just going to times that by 10, and then divide it by 3. And I get 2850, basically 2851. 28 51 and then that is cubic feet. So how many, how do we figure out, now that we know how much sand is actually in here, how do we figure out how many times the dump truck needs to come and pick it up? Well we need to figure out how many dump trucks are in this thing. To figure out how many of something is in another thing, we need to divide. So we're gonna say dump trucks equals 2851 and we're going to divide it by what one dump truck holds 135 so we got to figure out how many times 135 goes into that and we figure out how many times the dump truck has to come back and fill itself up so 2851 uh, divided by 135 is 21.1 21.1 uh, times the dump truck needs to come to back to pick up sand. 
um, that is one big pile of sand. Uh, now we can't have the dump truck come back 21.1 times so basically it has to come back 22 times so that we get all of it so we can say therefore the dump truck needs to come 22 times. Now the last thing, this is our last example. A cone has a base diameter of 12 meters and a slant height of 5 meters. What is the volume of the cone? What the heck does slant height mean? Well, I actually do know that. So, slant height means this. This diagonal line here is 12 meters. And it says, uh, oh, nope, I got that wrong. The slant height is not 12, the slant height is 5. It says the base diameter is 12. So that's 12 all the way across, which means from here to here is 6. Now it wants us to find the volume. Well, we're missing one little piece of information. To find the volume, I have to know the height of the cone. So I have to know this information here. Now luckily I can find that because the height meets the base at a 90 degree angle. So this is a right angle triangle. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to say using the Pythagorean theorem Pythagorean theorem um, H squared equals. Now we have the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. Remember this little box points to the hypotenuse. Whenever we have the hypotenuse I have to take it and subtract the other side. And right away we've got an issue here. Did I read this wrong? A cone has a base diameter of 12 and a slant height of 5. Okay. That is not possible. Do you see why it's not possible? I'm going to change the numbers here in just a second, but we want to see why I know there's a problem with the question. And that is because the slant height has to be, it's the hypotenuse, it has to be the longest side of the triangle. And it is definitely not because 6 is bigger than 5. So here I'm going to change the slant height. Let's change the slant height to 15, just to make our everything look neater, because all we have to do is stick a 1 in front of everything. And now it definitely is the longest side of the triangle. So now let's find our height. 15 squared is 225. 225 minus 36. And 225 minus 36 is 189. And so that is the height squared. Now remember what we have to do to figure out the height. We have to take the square root of 189. So let's pull up that calculator again. We're going to take the square root of that. 13.7. 13.7. This is in meters. So that is the height. Now we have to do vol uh, area of the base. Have I said that enough yet? Area of the base. In this case, the, the base is a circle. So the formula we need is pi r squared. And r is 6. So 6 squared is 36. So we need to do 36 times pi. 36 times pi. 113.1. Um, and then we need to do volume equals area of the base times height divided by 3 because it's a cone. So that's 113.1. The height in this case is what we figured out, 13.7. And that all has to get divided by 3. So let's pull this up. 113.1 times 
times 13.7 uh, divided by 3, 516.5 approximately, and this is measured in meters, and since this is volume, it's going to be cubic meters. Over here, this should have been square meters. And that concludes this lesson.